Brian Karn needs to be avoided. Brian Karn, truth be told, and I, I would pray that he would actually hear this, needs to stop preaching, needs to stop speaking, needs to stop standing before people, needs to stop giving bad information to people. He is deceived and deceiving others. And so if he gets this message, Brian, from me to you, from my heart to you, please stop. You are disqualified at the moment and probably permanently because you teach heresy. You're the one that said that you are looking at God in the flesh. You are looking at God in the flesh. See, y'all scared to say that. This is a person who needs to be avoided. Now, what he did was, because he's upset because people have, have had an issue with him making a statement that needs to be addressed. It's not gossip. It's not uh, slander. When you make a statement, say that people don't go to hell for sin. And he says we take him out of context. And so he wants to clarify. So let's listen to him clarify. And again. I'm viral. I'm used to it. That's what you all do to me. Take excerpts out of the message without clarity. I'm going to say something folk won't say. You, you, you can go to hell, but it can't be for sin. Now, let me just pause for a second. And I'll, it shouldn't be. And of course, most pastors don't go viral for things they say. Most pastors don't go viral for saying bad or having bad teachings like this man does. He's constantly having to give account or people are constantly calling out some of the foolish things that he has said. And so, yeah, you are wrong. And even this statement said that you can't go to hell, don't go to hell for sin. Let's let you say it again. You, you can go to hell, but it can't be for sin because Jesus paid the price for sin. But let me help you understand. Okay, help us out because what do you go to hell for? Please help us out, Brian Carn. And then hopefully you can get it and come on over here under the new covenant law, new covenant grace. A Muslim, a Buddhist, who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't lie, cheat, or steal, doesn't dip, cuss at you, or hang with them to do. If he dies, where's that Muslim going? We believe you're going to hell. Why? Well, the question is, why is he going to hell? He's going to hell because of his sin. And yeah, part of his sin is that he's not placed his faith in Christ, but he's going to hell. Make no think about it because of his sin because you didn't accept Jesus. None of their works make them righteous. Well, if none of your works make you righteous, none of your works make you unrighteous. I am righteous because of what Jesus did. Jesus went to Calvary and said, it is finished. Okay, let's back that up. He says, none of your works make you righteous. Let's just put it again. Well, if none of your works make you righteous, none of your works make you unrighteous. No. We are unrighteous before him because of our works, because of our sin. Now, it's not that you become saved and then become unsaved because of unrighteousness. No, but again, we stand unrighteous before the Lord. Why? Because of our sin. We're born that way and we verify it by the way that we live. Find it. Find your nearest two-year-old or three-year-old and tell them to not do something. You don't have to teach them to not do it. They're just going to, they're going to disobey because it's just their nature. And so our sin causes us to be considered unrighteous. This isn't very difficult, but apparently it is for Brian Carn. I am righteous because of what Jesus did. Jesus went to Calvary and said, it is finished. He paid the bill. He paid the tab. The sin issue is dealt with. You are not going to heaven because you don't accept Jesus. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the light. Now, again, it's very hard for some of you who say, well, I don't believe that, but you have to believe it because you sin. Yeah, you lie, you cheat, you steal, you gossip, you back, back. Matter of fact, you just in somebody's comments talking about me. So I know you believe that your works don't. It's one thing to say that we sin and that that sin as a believer is not going to take us to hell. That's for the person who is now deemed righteous before the Lord. We'll get to that in a second. But to say that sin does not send you to hell, the Bible says the soul that sins will now have to pay for that sin debt. So let's go to the Bible. Let's pull up uh, so that we can all see. And this is just really basic. This is basic Bible. 
if we just go to Romans. Romans 3, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So therefore, because we've sinned, we've fallen short and we deserve punishment. Because what does the Bible say? That the punishment for sin is, the wages of sin is what? Death. Now there's a free gift we'll talk about in a second, but the wages, the result, the consequences of sin is death. You go to hell as a result of that particular sin. Even if you want to do good things. Remember, Jesus says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Those will do all these wonderful things in his name. And what will he declare to them? I never knew you. But what does he say about them? You who practice or you workers of iniquity, you who keep doing, who are sinning, you sinners. Notice, by, by the way, the Bible doesn't call Christians sinners. And so those that sin and are known as sinners, they go to hell. That part is not that difficult to understand. Now, what's the result uh, or what happens as a result of Jesus Christ living a perfect, sinless life? Well, because the Bible declares that blood is the payment for sin, then we need perfect blood to pay our total and complete life of sin. So who comes up? Who shows up? Jesus. His debt, his sin debt pays for our bill. How do we know? Because the Bible says in Colossians 2, 14, Brian, that having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Nailed what? That debt. What debt? The debt of sin. Sin is the debt, the, the affront that we have against God. It's bothersome to him. And if you have sinned prior to placing your faith in Christ, then you are going to hell as a result of that sin plus many other sins. Having been having had your debt paid for, well, that's quite another story that if you sin after having placed your faith in Christ, but you stand unrighteous normally before him, which is why Jesus had to go and pay a debt. The Bible says in John 19, 30, that Jesus makes a statement. He says, tetelestai. Tetelestai is the Greek word for it has been finished. It's a past action completed. And it's also a term that's synonymous when someone owes a debt that the debt has been paid, paid in full. Nothing else is owed. Well, what's the debt again? Sin. No one owes a sin debt anymore having placed their faith in Christ. And then you stand righteous before the Lord. Prior to that, you were unrighteous. Why? Because of sin. Jesus Christ never sinned. And so he can pay the debt for us and place our faith in him. We are now in right standing. And so now sin no longer makes us unrighteous. He has misunderstood this and is leading people astray, not to mention the other things that he's done. And so I would just say this, and I would love for him to get this message. Brian, you are unqualified in terms of your teaching. You have you you simply do not know how to teach the word of God. You mislead people. You have given numerous false prophecies, the, 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 the Trump prophecies alone. The prophecy, the recent ridiculous false prophecy that you've given. God spoke to me. He said, somebody well known is about to be murdered. I said, killed? He said, uh-uh. He said, they're not going to die. He said, they're going to be murdered. That God said that someone is going to be murdered, but they won't be killed? Well, you can't be murdered and not be killed. Those, they go together like water and wet. But again, aside from those things, many other things that you said and done, keeps you from being someone that we as a body ought to take serious. So I would say to anyone else, if you're listening to Brian Carr, do yourself a favor. Don't listen to him. If you are listening to him and you can't decide, just read the Bible. At some point in time, Brian Carr's words against the Bible's words, you'll begin to see, hey, this guy doesn't line up. And so please stop listening to him. Amen.